Plastic Model Builders. It's me, your host, Ari. Welcome back. This is the Stuka, the Rebel Kit, the JU87G1. So anyway, we are starting off. I did this a little differently. I'm masking off the uh, canopy here with liquid mass because my successes and failures on my B17 has taught me some stuff. So I figured I just wanted to jump in and get right to that. So this time I learned to make sure the mask was fully covered and I'll show you some bare spots that I left that I went back and said, hey, this isn't good enough, so it needs more covering and you see them right there and I'll show you another quick shot of that coming up. Here it is again, bare spots. That's what it looks like when it, I guess you could say the liquid mask kind of kicks back, it does that. So I also tried some other things. I primered everything first. I'm not going to do that again. I did do that on another model after, you know, sometimes you try something. Well, maybe I did it wrong. I'll try it again. Well, I did it wrong on the other model as well. I've learned that when I do this and I constantly touch the model, it gets my fingerprints over it over time. The paint wears off, so I didn't like that. So no more pre-painting on the sprues like this for most of the model. But I'm showing you because I did it and I fear you'd wanna see it and you can learn from mistakes. Don't do that. Just wait till the model's assembled before you put any paint on it for the most part. This was okay because these are the canopies. It's not like I was handling those much. Uh, I spray on a dark gray. This is Model Master's acrylic. Uh, in case you haven't heard, they are no longer making those products since testers got bought out by Rust-Oleum. It is a shame. Everybody loved, I should say everybody loved those colors, but they were very popular. I use them a lot, as you can see, between those and the enamels. The enamels are also going away. I've also heard the small little square bottles are going away, but I don't know. That would be quite a shame. Uh, their reasoning is that the model industry is going down and their demographics tell them not many people are using those anymore. Maybe they are right and maybe we are the wrong ones. So here's some dark ghost gray. I'm going to put a little bit of this on the dark gray that I sprayed. Just a little bit of weathering to show some wear of where their feet would go and you know the chairs, that kind of thing. Where buttons get touched and pushed. Yes, they do wear over time. Uh, here's some silver. We all know these things were probably made out of aluminum. I'm going to put a little bit of dry brushing on here, you know, where you put some paint on the brush, get it off of the brush, and then just use what's on the tip. So we're playing the just the tip game with painting. And you can see just a little bit of footwear there. Not a lot, just subtle. Not really going to see it. It's a small cockpit. I put a little bit on the handle here, the joystick, and on the joystick. Why I put it on the joystick, I don't know, because you're not going to see it when I paint black over it. But we sometimes do things we're not sure why we do, and this is one of them. So, as you can see, just light, light touches of this stuff inside the controls. I like the little detail of the race controls here. Some models do it a little bit differently. They're a little bit better. Uh, you can see a mark there, those little circles from the uh, injection molds. I didn't bother taking those out. I just, you're not, you're not looking in my plane. Nobody's going to. Uh, here is the controls, more dry brushing. Just got it on there, best I could. Didn't get too excited over the controls. Here's a control stick handle. Let's go in just a black color, and we'll put that into the plane. I did put some liquid mask, by the way, on the bottom of that. Uh, this is the bulkhead for the propeller rod and the propeller. Just hand painting that. You don't really see much of this. It goes inside, so that's why you see me just hand painting it and not overly concerned about how it turns out. I put a bunch of liquid mask on the sides of these, just trying different things. We are spray paying, painting a rust color on here, and then we are going to get a darker brown color. You see me putting the liquid mask off. We're weathering these. So I'm getting a, uh, you'll see it coming up, a darker brown, and we are going to just lighten that up and put that over this. Kind of appreciating, kind of not. Uh, more just weathering. Really wouldn't say appreciating because I've already painted. So it is weathering. We're just getting that liquid mask off. For some reason it 
pulls the paint off. I don't know why I've always had that problem. Here's the uh, little paint I'm talking about, just some thinner and some enamel, and I just kind of put it all along here. It didn't turn out so good in the edges, so I repainted that later on down the line. But here I just go over everything just to darken it up a little bit. I can't remember what that technique is called. That's what it looks like right here. Just carefully, of course, paint our seat belts. It's model making madness. We've got to make it look pretty because it's a cockpit and you can't see inside of it barely. Now this one turned out decently in the end result, so I'm happy with it. I was going to put the pilots in and I decided not to. That's why I put some liquid mask on the uh, seat area there. I fear well the seat belts are in. If I put the pilot on and he has no seat belts and he's sitting on them, that's kind of redundant. So here's the back seat. Painted this one a little bit better. Can't really see it over my wonderfully clear canopies that I did when I uh, used some Pledge Revive It for the first time. Got a little silver aluminum, don't remember which, going over the uh, buckles here ever so lightly, just the tips of them. It leaves the inside highlighted and a shadow. Weathering techniques, fine little paintbrush right here. And those, of course, are the seats. I like how they turned out. They did a good job. I didn't like how you see how it's attached to the sprue, though. So here I am with a little bit of light gray, just weathering that as in wear from their uh, backs and their bottoms. I don't know if that's how it really should look, but I mean, that's kind of what I envision. You know, things get light when they get wear on them. So that's how I did it. It looks good. I don't have any complaints, and I hope you don't. Pop out my little liquid mask. I put it in my toothpick. There you go. Fun stuff. That means we are going to do the controls and all that stuff. And there's the other side. Just pull that out. All right, so let's attach the seats. This is the rear seat. Goes in reverse, just like that. And then we have the front seat. It's got a little triangle deal and another piece that sits into the round circle. So we push that in there just like so. Put a little bit more glue there. I'm a glue freak. I'm always convinced it's never good enough. And you get the liquid mask, putting it on the control stick there. And you see it just comes off. Try new stuff. If we're not trying new stuff, we're not trying to learn. So that's that. Make sure it's straight. And there is the flight deck, very simple. So the propeller needs a lot of work. Be careful when you clip it off. You see it leaves that little mark there. So we need to file that down ever so carefully. Just the one there. But then when you get to the sides of this, the propeller molds don't look quite right. So you have to file this down. I don't think this is what it would have looked like on the real plane. I think the propeller blade would just go in there. So sand these down best you can for the final product. It will make it look a lot better. I've heard people say this kit is not that great. It's a $15 kit. It goes together fairly easily. Sure, it has some things that need to be taken care of. Aside from that, it's a good plane. So just buy it and have fun with it. Don't worry about the detail. If you don't think it's enough detail or the detail isn't to your standards, you're not really gonna see most of it. So this is a prop, you see the shaft going in there. You wanna make sure that all turns, so you gotta sand everything properly. Press the shaft in, and you see the uh, bulkhead moving there. That's because you don't glue it down, so the shaft can turn. Got my liquid mass that I put on the sides here, because I was just trying, as I said, st new stuff, so I wouldn't have to scrape it away. Uh, just get right here the little marks from the injection molds where it's seated to everything. This is the tail wheel. Got our seam line, we need to take care of that. Not too bad, I'm just lightly sanding it with my reversed grit sandpaper. Uh, keep in mind, this is a fuselage halves. They are together, they are not glued. I'm just taking care of stuff without the glue on it. That way I don't have to go through glue to fix this seam line all the way down the middle of the plane. Turned out good, I liked it. All right, so here's that prop in there. You wanna make sure it freely spins. A little bit of work to do on the inside. You see it doesn't spin too freely. I didn't waste a lot of time on this, so that's a little outlet for it. File it down a little bit better. If 
you want, put some vegetable oil in there. It'll definitely make it spin faster, less friction and resistance. I put some white glue in here to mimic uh, glass. Didn't quite turn out how I hoped. I think part of that's because I'm using too thick of a glue. And I just need to thin it down instead of trying to put it on in a thick coat. Um, so here's where the instrument panel goes. You need to put this in carefully and put the other half on. You see how it's crooked there? Eyeballing it doesn't work, so you need to recenter it properly and make sure you do it right. That way everything fits. And that's what it looks like properly centered after you align everything. Put a little bit of glue in there. Make sure it holds. You can let that sit for as long as you want. I pull mine apart. Put some extra glue in. I have a thing for glue. And this is where the flight deck goes. Or at least the seats. I don't know what you would want to call it. It's just a little metal plate, essentially, where they sit. Front and back. Goes in nice and easy. It's got those marks there that stick out so you know how far to put it in. This is where the propeller bulkhead goes. Make sure that's pushed all the way to the back and the propeller is all the way to the front. Otherwise, it kind of won't fit just right. You see how it's popping up a little bit there on the front. And that's it. Very simple. Once that's glued, now comes the fun part. We put the fuselage together. Got to go all the way around all this stuff right here. Make sure it's glued in good. Then you'll clamp it tight. I show you everything. Maybe one day I won't show you everything, but this model I have. Got all these little holes over here, all around the back of the tail and the front of the tail. I'm gonna make sure it's glued tight. This is basically just to give it a little bit of extra bond and then we'll put the uh, other half on there and really tighten that down just like this. Let it sit, put some more glue in there because I love glue. Let's go all along this edge here, hold it down. You've made it through this video, congratulations, a minute left. Thank you for watching, so don't fast forward a minute, just watch all this. That's where the tail will go, fun stuff, the rudder. Get the front here, you see that seam line, we're gonna hide that later on. This is pretty much the plane, that's all you're gonna see. I'm going to show you uh, what's coming up next. So don't forget to subscribe, comment, and like, of course. Here are all the clamps that I used to hold it in place. Probably should use rubber bands, but I always break them. Anyway, next video, putting wings on. Those are the top wings going on to the bottom wings. I like how they did that. Got some wheels going down. Of course, the guns. Drill out the holes for that if you want to. Thanks for watching. Until next time. See ya.